I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 when my father and brother and I were at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. What is today? Mon Monday, Monday, October 2nd, if you can believe that, 2017. And I just want to start with, please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through a video and audio broadcast on Comcast Government Access Channel for broadcast at future dates. Comments made in open session will be recorded. And I just wanted to welcome our newest member. So welcome, Sandra Simon. So Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. you were appointed uh, by the selectmen last week. And I think you went in and got sworn in one time this week. Yep, one day last week. One day last week. Yeah. Great. So welcome. Thank you. Uh, we're happy to have you. I know you have a lot of experience, too, which I'm excited about on open space. So that will be good. So, okay. Uh, we want to just, I'm Sharon McNamara. And we'll just go around and everybody can announce Moore who they Clark, are. Scott Glavin. Mark Sotir. Sandra Simon. Rick Madden. Okay, and we don't have, um, Kyle is not going to be here. Is he coming Kyle back? I'm not Kyle, room. I mean Art. 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 He's not coming back? Okay, no. so we'll just get rid of Art for now. <laughs> Sorry, Art. I don't know where he is. He was here earlier, so. Um, okay, so we have a pretty easy agenda tonight. I wasn't here for the last meeting, uh, but it looks like we have some minutes, so I, I'm wondering if everybody had an opportunity to review the minutes. And if someone wants to make a motion to look at them, approve them, or whatever. Everybody wrote? Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Aye. perfect. So minutes are all taken care of. That's easy breezy. Uh, the mail. So the mail's been going around. Everybody's mm -hmm. just sort of looking at that, so we can do that at our leisure. So that's one of the things we said we'd just come a little early if we can, just mm -hmm. to sort of read through the mail. Sorry about that. Can you kick no. those? Sorry. Is no, they're over there. They're over there. Just kick them. <laughs> they're a pair of cheaters. I got them at, like, CVS. <laughs> Thank you. Um, oh, that's good. Um, so with the mail, um, if you didn't get a chance to go through it, uh, please take time to do it. We had asked, um, I think it was our initial meeting uh, for Rachel just to put in a check thing in there, you know, so we can all just check it off when we've read the mail that way there. Um, if there's anything of importance in there, we know who wasn't able to see it and we make sure that you got the information. Um, and that's good. So that will go around. Any questions or anything about those who did get a chance to look at the mail? No? You're good, Bob? Yep. All right. Perfect. And forms for signature, we only had one. Right? Are we looking at the same one? Am I looking at the wrong one? Mm -hmm. I think so. Where's our agenda? Right here. Thank you. Mine says October 2nd. Why is mine different? Okay. I'll take this one. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, <coughs> forms for signature, so everybody saw those in there. The, there's a few payment vouchers, register your deeds filing, for, um, fee for Lettums Ford, the order of um, occupancy. Yeah. What is it? The there's something we need to, that's something to talk about, but let's go through it now. Uh, What's that? Well, I'll talk about it. We're looking perhaps to improve how we can pay bills. like. Uh, this oh, well, that comes up on the agenda. What? That comes up later. Well, as I say, it's at either end of the okay. of the agenda here. Yeah. I mean, it's at 740, but I feel like we're here talking about forms for signature, and three of them are vouchers. Yep. So I guess the extension for the first one, um, what was that? The issue to the mass dot on November 26th. So everybody, did we sign that? Yeah. That's, in, in that's all done. Okay, so now we have three payment vouchers. That should get us to about 740, so we might as well talk about them all together, do you think? Yeah. You guys good with that? I just want to sort of stay yeah. on track. Yeah. All right, so what, what are your thoughts? Well, it's, you know, it's things like the Registry of Deed. In order to get when the town is doing a project, we have to pay their fee. 
To get the fee to go to the registry, you have to have a voucher. It has to go upstairs. It has to go to the selectman and next meeting. So it can take a mm -hmm. number of weeks before you record what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And in, in this case, it's for the hydro seating yeah. at Lennon's Ford, which needs to be done. Yeah, time sensitive. Mm -hmm. It's just we need to do a, have a better way of being able to get vouchers like that mm -hmm. signed and, the, and paid mm -hmm. so we can be more efficient. Mm -hmm. So when did we initially get the one for that? Like, like well, it came out of this office anyway. Yeah. In other words, we is our own. Yeah. It's our own thing. So Amazing. it was. Yeah. A better example would be like when we got the water bill for um, 190 Barker Street. Mm -hmm. That should be something that I should just be able to sign and pay instead of waiting for a meeting because actually that bill was late because I had to wait for a meeting. Oh yeah. And then we had to pay a late fee <laughs> on a fifteen dollar water bill, yeah. right? Yeah. So if I yeah. could have just paid it right when I got it, it wouldn't have been late, and then mm -hmm. we wouldn't have had to pay the extra. So I think that's what Bob's Is that something that we can do though from an administrator, like from a standpoint of town policy? I'm just not sure if they allow the administrators to do that. I, I didn't the selectman do it with Ed. And I know Ed's a town administrator, but he's also an administrator like Rachel is. We do it on CPC. Um, Brian and I, it just takes our two signatures to approve administrative type bills. Yeah. Could we put something in place where, like, say, just as an example, anything under $100 falls into that category that shouldn't be tied up? No. Or any, anything that's within the town time, hall. The time time sensitive. Because those registry filings are 75 account. bucks, right? They're yeah. never going to mm -hmm. be more well, than Well, time that. sensitive is an important yeah. issue yeah. like yeah. you're talking about, too. So not just the amount of money, but the time sensitivity of it would be more important in some respects. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? But if we had a time-sensitive as long as there's two people was... signing, not just yeah. one person, I think somebody should uh, tell us if we're wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? I think I'm sure they will. I, I'm, I'm a little concerned just, I mean, because if we had something time sensitive, but something time sensitive could be $3,500. And I think that that's sort of a, I, I just think with. Well, that's what I was saying, put a cap on it. Yeah, and then, yeah and but then he anything. was saying, I think, and or, and yeah. both. You know what I mean? One yeah. is a cap, one is a time sensitive. But, I mean, we're all in town as well, too. Yes. I mean, I have no problem <coughs> from an administrative standpoint. That's my opinion. You know, anything in town hall, obviously, the water bill and that type of stuff. No, we can't do that. That we have a meeting and say yes, you can. Right. Mm -hmm. So, Rachel, can I ask what you think you would need for a budget number? Yeah, for a cap. Um, well, for instance, uh, this the latest uh, order of conditions recording fee that's seventy-seven dollars. So I mean, it's not anything extravagant. So maybe two fifty, just in case you yeah. had two yeah. to do at once. Or? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's, I would say I would, that's I a, would, a really I would start make a there, motion and then that if that didn't work, you go up We allow there. Rachel to pay that bill with Bob's signature. Yep. Where mm -hmm. He's the agent. He, kno yep. he knows yep. what's going on. Make yep. a motion that between Bob and Rachel, they could sign a time-sensitive one, anything under $300. Yep. I agree. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank Thank you. You just made my job a lot easier. Oh, good. Yeah. That's really yeah, and to, I mean, yeah. in the absence yeah. of Bob, I mean, we yeah. cannot. And, and the, yeah. 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 no voice. Anybody that's available on the commission? Oh, I changed yeah. it. You did? Yes. Call good. me. Kudos. Kudos. <laughs> All right. Did you get that, Rachel? I'm sorry. Do in we, the we have to make an adjustment to it, though? Right? Uh, um, what do they call it? Addendum? Mm hmm. Yes. Addendum or amendment to that, that amendment. if Bob is not available, any one of the members can sign? Great. Thank you. That's great. So when you're taking all your lavish yeah. vacations? Yeah. yeah. Right. So I all are in favor of that? Came back. Hmm? I, I know just you were away in Tennessee, right? How was the wedding? I was in Nashville. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So all of these payment vouchers, everybody saw those, right? No yes. questions about uh, all those. Well, if we're talking, let's talk about this the lake management fund, which again is the same as the lily pad at, mm -hmm. at Furnace Pond. Mm -hmm. It was an all one of these needed to be done. It needed to be done right away. Mm -hmm. Funds have not had not been appropriated to do it. Uh, so they were looking to see who could you know, do it. Uh, we kind of volunteered for it and we hope you back us, us up. Uh, CPC gave us a sum of money. How much, Rachel? A year ago? Uh, $69,000. 
Wow. And just put that in our open space account, and we can use we can expend funds right away at our meeting. Where if it be, gets logged in at CPC, they have to meet. It's got to go to a town meeting. It's a six months so hangover. Six months so yeah. mm -hmm. the money that they forwarded to us when we didn't even ask for, we can use to pay these bills, and perhaps they'll do that again for us. Mm -hmm. Is that when when all of them had to be treated again? Yeah, yeah, we've done this is the second time we've we've worked tap tap that fund. But it's with the lakes it's not that we can afford to wait when right. when the time is right for these weeds we gotta hit it. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're, I hope the town is working on a better way of paying for all of this because they've been tapping C P C and us for a lot of what should be right out of out of the town. The Board of Health should have a line item someplace with that, or the history it would of it. be an emergency reserve mm -hmm. transfer or something. The, the kind of the history of it is when it first started with Furnace on Hobmark Pond, Conservation put up the money for the first one. And then after that, the town did, but then it was under the Board of Health. In other words, it wasn't mm -hmm. under us, and that was fine. You know, the more they want to do, it's, no, it's in mm -hmm. there. And then all of a sudden, they decided. They wanted, no, nope, they only wanted part of it. In other words, it's, yeah, some of it is theirs, but it's, no, they aren't taking care of it all. It's kind of a, getting sloppy. But it's got bigger, too, because it's not just Hobmark Pond. Now no, it's, it's all the man yeah. furnace. It's, it's three points <coughs> that we're doing. Now, were so. these alum treatments or something else? Well, I don't know what they did on the lily pad. We hit somewhere around the literature. A cyanide mm -hmm. type of treatment, um, which is a lot of skepticism on it's migratory properties versus it's non. Um, in different applications, I've seen completely different things Excuse happen. Me. Sorry. I've seen it migrate two miles down into Havamok Pond where they stopped at the mouth of Gorm and it's not supposed to migrate. But in turn, it did a heck of a job. So, it's I been, think it's you been watch. working, but it's expensive. But as I understand it, it's not a program that you're going to say, this is the last one we're going to need. It's an, it's ongoing, going, yeah. an yeah. ongoing program. Probably. So if it being an ongoing program, it needs to really be tucked into the town budget it should be a somewhere, not, budget. Just, yeah. mm -hmm. not just trying to find money every time we have to do it. Um, My point I was making is that since we know that a lot of these weeds and the temperatures of the pond and all are created by these massive draws of our water all the time for the last 137 years. That's a pretty big free ticket. Um, I think it really has to go through the state and get remediation and, and make them take care of the buck um, or at least pony up something. Um, I'm not talking tomorrow. I'm aren't, talking down the road. Aren't the selectmen put in a letter to get it to yes, send to Brockton? Yes, we are. Would that be part of that yeah. process? It's yeah, it's basically when the federal government, this is what I hear, jumped in 1964, they decommissioned all the environmental remediation officers that had never made a dime, never given a dime up anyways. But that's where that power comes from, and um, you can do things faster by recommissioning a commission than and they were decommissioned, recommissioned, and so they did that. But that's just the beginning. I think that whole idea has to be um, looked at a lot deeper. And that since there are laws, and they're the ones killing your muscles, and they're the ones, the muscles are cleaning the water and causing, the, getting rid of the algae free. I mean, there's got to be remediation that goes on at this at one point. Where you say enough is enough, you know, you get the water, at least take care of the environment and help us. And that's, we're mm -hmm. moving towards that, you know, we're moving towards it, but they try to outlive you. Yeah, and you have to start with, like, we've got kids that are 10 years old in the fisheries, and that, that's what it's going to take. It's going to take somebody 10 years old to live his life to do it. I just remember hearing it, I think it was last week's yeah. selectmen's meeting, Making, they, were they were talking or writing a letter to Brockton, and, and the fisheries, and fisheries yeah. Uh, yeah. Mass Fisheries was going to write a letter. Write a letter. You know what's a, a pretty strong group is that um, Central Plymouth Water Commission. I go to the meetings all the time. Okay, so that's a, you know somebody else that we should probably 
interface with in some way because they, they actually have legislative authority mm -hmm. on some of these water bodies as we it should, pertains to... We should all attend rocket. those meetings once in a while in our spare time. Totally but they do video... Is that Pine the No, that's the yeah. Jones River. They're also, okay. uh, you know... But they video all mm -hmm. these now. They video. So if you can't go, you can do it. And I think this Bill Boulder, our representative, yep. yeah, yep. so <coughs> the town does have representation on that. Yeah, and I just think it's that's we have to make sure that that trend grows, not goes away. We need to uh, kindle that because that's and who would want to say no to take all the water bills for 137 years, all towns, add them up, then tell them it's time you start paying. Yeah, I, I don't I mean, want to. It's, it's, I don't want to drift from the subject, but no, I'm not. I'm our, saying the money Rick is and there. I, uh, happen to attend. Uh, um, Watershed mm -hmm. Association meeting exactly. uh, last week, and it was it was actually pretty pretty well attended. It was interesting. It's a group that mm -hmm. wants to get revitalized, and and you know our purview, as I understand it, is the water bodies too. So mm -hmm. uh, you know I think that's another thing that we should be involved in uh, because you know there's strength in numbers, and uh, you know I think Brockton has has been uh, uh, taken advantage of the lack of interest over the years mm -hmm. in people complaining, mm -hmm. uh, and you know they just do what they want. So. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a it's a long long haul for sure, but uh, you yeah, know, there are some groups that are popping back up. And we talked about Abington Rockland and how easy it would be to put um, die packs in along that and see what their actual pull is into Big Sandy because they're pulling the bottom right out. We literally get a hundred and a million and a half gallons from Indian Head, a half a million, a million from Oldham, and when it goes out the end of Furnace, there's thirty thousand gallons trickling out, and Brockton's not pulling. Abington Rockland, right under our noses. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So it's just got to be studied and cared about and not drop the ball and mm -hmm. fixed because this water is everybody's, ours too, not just theirs. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not joining another committee. How about you, Sandra? <laughs> <laughs> but you can go online. They're all videoed. Yeah. You can go online, though, and they're all videoed no, and get a lot of information. No, I'm, I'm only kidding. I will. It definitely takes some time to do some of that because it is interesting to well, just see. I mean, we're the ones they're pulling our water, so yeah. they're pulling their water. Mm -hmm. We're trying to fight for our little drip. When yeah. we uh, come to the conclusion that there's seven different uh, cities and towns nine. taking water from Pembroke, no, nine. Pembroke takes none of Pembroke's mm -hmm. water. Yeah, yeah and need, then Pembroke had to spend. I know. But That's then what I'm saying. Pembroke spent a, a so lot of money to buy. Right, to put wells and stuff down on Elmer and everything, right? So the water is removed from Pembroke, and yeah. the, the individual agencies that remove it pay no fee to Pembroke. Right, oh, they, they just get paid they, all the way down the spout. And then they the water for profit all the way to down their the, yeah. own. Yeah. Huh. Brockton sells it to East Bridgewater, they sell it to Whitman. How did they work that the out? <laughs> if you read it, it goes back to the 60s, and right. the phrase that I always think of is that in the um, MGL it says, so as not to inconvenience the citizens of Brockton. That's oh. why they got the water, so as not to inconvenience. Hmm. They have Brockton had a big they have plant that they pay six that million dollars a year. Well, well Brockton, Brockton yeah. employed almost a million people. Brockton was the Venice of the New World and the most forward-thinking well, metropolitan city in the world. Which, which, which at one to point, me is even worse, is they have a salting plant. Yeah. That they can use and don't that utilize they, that because they it costs million more money for them it. to de salt mm -hmm. than it does just to mm -hmm. take yeah. it for nothing. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They're paying six million bucks a year. Just to even the, even though they don't take any water. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, well, and they're they're locked into it. Uh, and they should be drawing water. Yeah. And the other one is is they that are trying to buy it. Aren't they? they have. It was a motion uh, that they the city council had, and it, it was supposed to be voted on late this summer, and it could. I think there's an election going on, and they, they mm -hmm. pushed it aside. But, but the amount of water also that systematically died. over the, the course of this water district that were, people were caught with their hands in the in the pail, um, full of money, several in my lifetime. Nobody ever really got in that much trouble. You know. hmm. But you the know, state's going to end up mandating that they have a secondary source. Uh, the state actually has mandated it, but I don't think it's come down to what it is. So. Uh, you know, in the research that uh, that I've done, and the folks from Jones River who've done a tremendous amount of work, Silver Lake replenishes itself to about four million gallons a day. Brockton takes ten million gallons a day out. <laughs> yeah, so if they could just 
cut it down to the level that it replenishes itself, yeah. you know, we can yeah. solve a lot of problems there, and they have the source with Aquaria to do that, as opposed to, you know, hooking up to the MWRA, which they also have the ability to do when they're talking about. So I think, you know, again, it's not going to be a fix tomorrow, but... Uh, they should be managing the all their rainwater for commercial use. They should be doing everything possible since they've done nothing but never pay. I right. guess there's not an incentive they have because no they take it to do anything for free. Right. Yeah, they right. have it for yeah. free. Well, that's what I was yeah. going to say. Once saying. you start charging them, then they'll be a little more, con you know, have a little more conservation with their water, don't you think? We're conserving a little bit more. Mm -hmm. When they got all the free water, I mean, they really were a, a, the, the world's most leading metropolitan city. They had all the overpasses, so the trains and the commuters didn't hit. They had um, a canal system that they called Venice, one of the most rain and uh, remediating flood control systems ever built in a city around here. They don't even know how to run it. It floods all the time. <laughs> it is one of the, the, the most up-to-date runoff water and, you know, water control structures, and they don't even use them. It just okay. floods everywhere. What aggravates me is that they don't, every summer, they never post any water restrictions because they make money off the water. So <laughs> they have no motivation. <laughs> To have, to, to have water restrictions, and it's, it's yeah. just yeah. inconceivable to me. Well, that's that they I think it's backwards. It, it's right backwards. down the bottom line is Brockton has no reason to do anything because they're living their life, and until till someone can force the issue, yeah. yeah, push the issue to the point that it's going to hurt them, and the only place it's going to hurt them is the dollar wallet. Yep. in the mm -hmm. wallet. That's right. But they've always had enough political clout that whatever anyone else brought in was swept aside. I mean, because these talks that we're having right now, 40 years ago, were, same were the same, same same basic talk with the you know, other thing. But Brockton always had the political power to go to the State House and whatever you said was, you know, wasn't worth much. Not heard. Hmm. Seems to me they have the skin in their game a little bit, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. But I think we have don't to just keep the pressure up. I think they're losing that power. Yeah. I think they're no longer the great metropolitan mm -hmm. center of <laughs> commerce they were, and I think uh, that's weakening them. And yeah. they have options, and that's you know? that's one thing they yeah. can't walk away from yeah. is the fact that they have options now. Yeah. And it's irresponsible exactly. to keep doing what they're doing when they have options. Um, okay, so that was a good discussion. So um, I was told, though, just today by um, two guys on that program that they are pursuing that, that uh, basically cease and desist. So hmm. That should be fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's been a long time. Which one? Did we talk about these other ones already? The administrative agent? We talked about that, the fall conference reg registration? Who's going no. to that? that uh, you Rachel. Rachel's, Rachel's going? going. Okay. I can't make it. Was anybody else going? Were you aware of it? Which one is it? Just the one was it again, October 28th? Yeah. Is that the one we're talking about? Yeah. Is that for everybody? Or is that all, different, mm -hmm. all different classes again? Um, not as many as... Okay, when do we have to have it in by? Um, yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me that. I know that it was an yesterday. email, but you yeah, don't get email, Yeah, there was right? an email, yeah. <laughs> no. Is it not in the mail? It should be in the mail. Yeah, it is in the mail. I know they... That's, no, that's no, but that's one that's before that. Up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's a list of the classes. Mine are the ones I'm taking. Does this have the classes on it too? Okay, there's an agenda on this one. So okay. it's um it's um, the 28th, and I think that, did you have to, when did you have to give res, um, RSVP? I don't see anything about it. I mean, yeah. I already did mine, but I'm sure it's still open. Yeah, uh, it's 150 I believe it's $150. No, 110 Oh, 110 yes. for each person going. I cannot make it, so this is in the mail, so if anybody's interested in going, just let Rachel know. And we just signed hers, right? Um, okay, so that was taken care of. The registry of deeds, we talked about that. That was and all set, the, right? Uh, they mm -hmm. pay here. You don't pay that money, they do. Yes. Same okay. Um, discussions. We talked about the administrative approval for bills, so we're good on that. The extension um, issue to Mass DOT. That was what you signed there. 
uh, extensions of basically a blanket that allows mass DOT to work on the sides of the highways that go through this town on repairs or emergencies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other any discussion about it or I see it under discussion, so I don't know who wanted it there. Well, it's just we we after we signed the the okay to do it. So okay. So we're good on that. Yes, no. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. I don't have any on it. Do you? Anybody? No. Okay. Uh, let's see the drainage change at Mattachusett Street and Furnace Lane. Okay. Well, back when Route 14 was still in planning stage, this the people on this board at the time extensively looked at the plans trying to get the water drain the storm water as clean as possible going back into Furnace Pond. Mm -hmm. Partially because they felt that if they didn't do this now, when it came time to look for money for the uh, dredging and all that sort of stuff, all the cleaning of the water, we'd be pretty hard put mm -hmm. to say we want your money now, but we just dumped all the, our garbage back yeah. into your pond. Mm -hmm. And though it wasn't easy, there was a lot of Nights and a lot of fights, mm -hmm. uh, fights a lot of discussions <laughs> and, stuff, and, and everything else. And <laughs> we didn't get anywhere near what we'd like to. We got as much as we could. One of the things was the halfway up the road, that big tank that went in, yep. uh, that big sediment type tank. Uh, down at the pond on the corner of Furnace Lane, uh, DEP, you know, DOT. None of them would put up any money for anything down there, so the town meeting, we went before town meeting, got a sum of money to support to put in what the engineers at the time thought was a good deal, some fancy drainage pits. Is that what we want to call them? Yeah. Fancy yeah. Eliminated. Well, they, they yeah. originally wanted to put storm yeah, that's what we're septers. talking about, the original yeah. stuff, yeah. yeah. They the wanted storm septers. Storm septers in, and to basically put the storm septers in, you were going to have to shut Route 14 down for at least three to four days. Yep. Completely. In Furnace Lane. In Furnace Lane. Because yeah. the hole had to be 24 feet deep oh my goodness. to install these storm scepters. Plus, the town doesn't have the equipment to maintain them once they're in. So, we uh, met with Landis and Ryan from EPG, and actually, the gentleman from Landis, John Molander, which is the site supervisor out here, come up with these eliminating hoods which he was kind of shocked they weren't on the original plans to begin with anyhow, because um, anytime you do work around a pond, these should be installed, mm -hmm. period. And he come up with this, it's, uh, it's, right now it's our only option to do it. And it's better than putting nothing in there. Mm -hmm. Stuff that I brought in today, you copy for? It's in everybody's, everyone has one. Oh, it's in it's in our mm -hmm. This is the size of the drainage uh, structure that was put in up across from Samson's uh, number. It's a 10,000 gallon sedimentation tank that all the water comes in from the upper end of Mattachisa Street, goes into, settles out, and then when it reaches the upper part of the tank, the clear water goes out and proceeds down the line. Would you by chance know how far towards from the intersection of Mattachisa and Furnace Lane uh, say up towards the center of town, how many of the storm drains drain into Furnace Pond? All of them. All, All of them, them. <laughs> that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's a this, lot of... So what is the sediment for? I don't know. This, I don't is get the, it. this is a 10,000 gallon tank that was yeah. installed right across from Samson Lumba. Yeah. Yeah. And right now, all the water comes from the upper end of Mattachisa Street into this. Yeah. Everything settles out and then the clean water proceeds Goes into out. the next 12 catch basins. Is that pumped at a certain mm. interval? No, it's actually, the, the tank's so big, it's, it's, it's a, it, they figure it's at least 25 years oh, wow. okay. before they're going so to have to like pump it. So it's like a filter? It. Yeah. Um, this is what went in up the upper. This is upper already what's in. And DOT paid, paid that one. No, we the town paid for Did this we one. Pay this one. That was that was part of that money we had oh, got okay. from that. And originally there was supposed to one of supposed to be one of these going in at Furnace Lane, but the mm -hmm. town doesn't own a big enough easement to yep. install this tank. So the next thing is these eliminators that go into catch basins. 
and that's what our option is right now. Yep. And how much more expensive are those? Yeah. They are only $200, $265 each compared to the storm septas themselves, I think were 65000 each. What? But it, it was going to cost well over $100,000 yeah, well, to have them installed. The other thing is, after it's, we put, after it's all put together, there's nowhere near enough money to put the storm no. septas in with what right. had been approved. Right, right. 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 And these eliminators is the dewater. I had a chance a really to read this. I yeah. just got it today. Uh, a nightmare. The storm septas go in each each, each catch, catch basin. basin. If there's any money left, the town administrator, I, I know she's talked with you, but yeah. he and I talked that if we have money left from this account when we're done, then he'd like to install them in more of the catch basins that are on this project around the pond. Yeah. That, no. uh, what is this product? Just can you give me a? Basically, it goes. It fits into the drainage pipe. Yeah. And it, it's. It looks like they call them actually a hood, and what it is, before the water exits out, it takes a takes any as much as it can out of the water that's discharging. The big Whether it's if you, oil, gas, sedimentation, it's. It, before the water, it, be, it traps it before the water goes to the next basin. Like a baffle system. They're, or? They're, they're talking about filters now, but we've researched them. They're not available to the public yet. But eventually they can have filters put in them. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's so a, they can be retrofitted later with better filters yeah. also. That's huge. Yeah. That's huge. They just, they're, they're on their website, but they're no. not available yet. Yeah. No. In the, in the intern that the worst happens and we start seeing a big plume of dirt in furnace, what do we do? You're not going to, with, even just with that one sedimentation tank yeah, they put in. Just one. You, they've, the requirement to these, uh, to be able to use these eliminators, the catch basins all had to be four feet around and at least have a four foot sump to them, yeah. which all these new catch basins do. Yeah. And that was actually the only way EPG would agree to even looking at this option, which is the town's engineers, the DPW uses. They would not recommend them unless they met their criteria as far as using these. Too bad we couldn't have just kept going down to that bog there by big, by no bottom and just put a nice siltation open place in there, huh? We wouldn't have any place to pump the stuff from furnace then. We can negotiate that one. <laughs> Why, so with the easement, I mean, how much more of an easement did they need? Would have that been cheaper or just easier? No, no, or no, would have been more expensive anyways? It's logistics. Well, uh, the I mean, the, the one on your picture, that would have been more expensive? Oh, yeah. Then why did we do that there? Why didn't we do what you're talking about? Because this, this was, there was supposed to be two of these. Yeah. And there's just not the room to put the second, second one in. One. So yeah. This is, uh, again, the, the original was the storm septus. Yeah. And that was just too prop. Yeah, price to him, you know, so they didn't have the room to put this tank in because dewatering itself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, you it's, you couldn't keep the water out of the hole no. long enough to sink that tank. No. Yeah. So that's a three-piece tank, and it goes in in sections, and unfortunately, you have to squeeze it all together to get it. So like a septic yeah. tank. Yeah, just a a lot Big bigger one, version. Yeah, a lot it's about as big as this room. Really? Yeah. So. All right, so normal septic tanks tanks are like 1,500 1, gallons. gallons. What are these? This is a 10,000 gallon. Wow. Tank. That's a house. That's big. The cave. <laughs> See, part of why we're looking at this at all, well, other than we have want clean water in the mm. lakes, is that before too long, the state's going to start coming down and sampling all stormwater discharges mm. in anywhere in town. And if they don't meet a certain criteria, you're going to start losing your funds for your mm -hmm. highway yeah. and all. And it's only a matter of a few years Come when on. they're going to be be doing this. So uh, anything we do now is just saving, get, us. Getting, saving us money yeah. later down the yeah, line. Yeah, so it's preventative. The, the bad side sure. about, because I like to throw the bad sides out that go along with these eliminators, mm -hmm. is that it's going to mean a lot more work for the DPW crew. Because once a year they're supposed to be taken out and oh, clean part of it. and, and looked at. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. For many years, DPW, when we put what we used to call gas traps yep. on subdivisions, anywhere we could, which were at the time state of the art, they didn't want them uh, to the point where if they were in there somehow or other the first time the catch basin was cleaned, it, they got knocked they off there no more. because they were in the, in the way. 
And that's part of why eliminators weren't really looked at early in the Route 14 project is because we knew that if we said eliminators, DPW would be jumping on it. Yep. But now there's no other solution at that point. So uh, they've said yep. you know, they're going to bite the bullet and they have to, you know, well, have to do it. Can't that be taken care of with, with a sucker truck instead of the well, old claw, the, you know, the, and the just problem is bring we, it up to we date. own a basin cleaning unit. Right. We Eventually the town's going to have to front the money for a vac truck. Right. That's a half a million dollars for a vac truck. Well, you put in plumbing like this, you're going to need one. It, it is, and, and we're know? fortunate right now in extreme emergencies when we have a flooding issue, we can call another town That's yeah. that yeah. owns yeah. one. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's Technically, we're not supposed to be doing that. We don't have a mutual aid agreement with anybody, but we just do it as a common currency. Did we have something with like a, a truck, like a sweeper or something? I thought didn't we? Weren't we, we had we had a tri town sweeper for three three towns: Hanover, Hanson, and Pembroke. Unfortunately, they bought the truck, they maintained the truck for three years, and then it was like, okay, let's dump it in Hanson because it needs repairs right now because we don't have the money in our budget to repair it. Well, Hanson decided they're all done with it. The town of Hanover decided we're all done. That's the only sweep of the town of Pembroke Owens now because Oz died. Okay. So that's what's out there, and it's running on a wing and prayer right now. Okay. So that's why it doesn't make sense to have a joint yeah. anything. Yeah. Right. Unfortunately, that was a state right. grant, I think. Right. Ed Unfortunately, four taking years care ago. of the highways is getting to be very expensive equipment wise, too. And like many things in this town, we just have not kept up with. No, the pace that we're doing it. Mm -hmm. So they've got they've got some specialized equipment like these mm. things. They need them. They haven't got them, but the town hasn't got any money either. So I mean, hopefully we, somewhere yeah. down the line, the state will come up with another round of grants like they did yeah. when they bought the sweep up right. to to purchase back trucks. And who does all that grant writing for things like that? I honestly don't know. Do we have? I know a Ed writer? Ed secured the last one for the weed harvester. And the um, mm -hmm. Dry Town Sweeper. Yeah. Oh, about the uh, <coughs> um, Phil, the warden in Weymouth, just he says, beware. If you use that dredging machine, they, everybody likes to go out and pull out the uh, lily pads that you root prune them and they grow time, 10 oh, times oh, faster. Well, we you can, you can see They root pruned and that their, their pond is just overwhelmed we, in one year. We did it, yeah, we did what, it for five, six years yeah. ago. We got, we, the DPW got, here's your weed harvester, here you go. Well, we found out the conveyance system you can't load the truck with. No. Nope. So literally we would, you need a bobcat we would, to run we it back would and forth. weed over on this side of the pond, we'd literally dump it on Furnace Beach. Yeah. Then three days later, after the water dried out a little bit, which the neighbor didn't make the neighbors real happy, we'd have to go retrieve the <coughs> weeds and haul them to the dump. The weed harvester was another thing. Three towns owned it. Yeah. And you'd get it back, and the wheel would be broken off of it. This would be broken. Well, I'm not paying for that. It happened when you guys had it. <coughs> and finally, we did the same thing, hand over and hands to the dust. We went, here you go, Duxbury. You want it? It's all yours. Yeah. And I don't think it's ever left the town of Duxbury in the past five years. They use it on one pond, the pond right on uh, Route 14. I don't know the name of the pond, right, but it's got, right the, Route 3. Yeah. It's it's got the little park yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. But they're fortunate enough, they have a spot in the back of the pond where they don't have to haul the stuff. They dump the weeds dump right it. back in the pond, in the back side of it. Hmm. But it wasn't meant meant to do the job it was sold to do. No. It cuts seven feet deep. doesn't go any deeper. And it's basically a hay cutter. That's all it is. Loads yeah. of stuff into the barge, That's and you get rid of them. The one I'm talking about is the actual digger that they used in, in uh, Weymouth. Their pond has six, seven times the weeds this year because all you do is root prune, pull up big chunks of root, that root prunes it, and it just prolifically grows. Yeah. <coughs> so they're going back to chemicals also for the extraction. No, they're basically trying to decide this. We're... This is the only alternative we have, mm -hmm. but uh, but it is going to help the water. Yeah, mm -hmm. a, a, a whole it's going to clean more. it a lot more than it is right now yeah. going mm -hmm. in there. And this is what the com this, this committee had strived at the beginning was to get the water cleaner, mm -hmm. you know, with with what was there.
Mm -hmm. Well, it's important. I mean, I know Streets Pond in Hull. I mean, that just, yeah. you know, just it's overtaken by something. I don't know, but it's. I think was it probably about ten years ago, around Adams Ave area, they yeah. redid. Yeah, some thirty catch, catch basins yeah. in yeah. there mm -hmm. to trap the stuff before it goes into the pond. And those are one of the first ones we clean in the spring. Mm -hmm. And we make sure that those roads get swept constantly, anything around yeah. the pond. Yeah. How often do you have to clean them? They, we try to clean all of them once a year. Once a year? Are those the leaching ones? Yeah. Yeah, those are nice. And we try to sweep the town. Yeah. Technically, we're supposed to sweep the town twice a year. Hmm. But the machine won't. Is won't there maybe an out. opportunity, maybe one day you could just like take me around to see some of these things, just sure. like what, so I know what you're talking about yeah. and just like try to understand it a little bit? Absolutely. I don't like the woods or anything, but I'll definitely go near some of those beasts. <laughs> most, <laughs> most of the stuff's out in the street. We can take you in the woods if you want and show you some no, of the no, I'm just letting you know. I went to the doctor. They think you might. Could you get bitten by a tick? I go, not even a single solitary chance. <laughs> You'd be surprised. They're not a deer yeah. tick. They're, they're a I mouse, know. snake, and bird tick. No, so I'm, I'm, I don't touch grass. I'm fine. I we grew up in the city. Yeah. a map done up by EPG that shows all the town's drainage, and we're actually in the process of updating mm. that now. We have 360 outfalls mm -hmm. that, like Bob said, within the next couple of years, part of the Stormwater Act, they're going to stop coming out and start mm. sampling every one of those spots, yeah. and mm. the town's going to be on the hook to pay for that. Wow. Yeah. Uh, we've done a good job right here at the, some parts of town where we're running direct discharge yeah. mm -hmm. right off the road into the, into the waters. Really? Yeah. And every one of them has its own peculiar way, and some of them we still haven't figured out you're going to do them because it... You've got to have room. Yeah, they're too close to the source. Is the road's the source of the water, and then the dump source is right there. Well, you do? You got even cleaning feet. the easements yeah. that a lot of the new developments have. Mm -hmm. People's yards have taken over the access to the easement. So now people are going to be very unhappy with the DPW this year. We have several that we're going to have to go in and clear cut. Mm -hmm. a road going into a drainage easement so we can access and clean it. That's what it's for. Well, everybody and is told, and also title, you know, title yeah. searches are done and everything else. Yeah. So when the title exam is done, those people are sitting at the closing table and the attorney is saying, this is an easement so the town can come through. But even yeah. even they know that, and yeah. Yeah. they see the they truck pull up with a chipper on the back of going, what are yeah. you doing yeah. to my trees? Yeah, yeah. 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 oh, P.S., move your fence <coughs> that you weren't supposed to put there, right? Well, <laughs> so there's, we've seen people do that, too. There's several off of Elmer Road. Yeah. You go, you try to access to get to the drainage, and the people got stockade fence. It's like, I know the drainage has got to be mm -hmm. in some place. You get on the back side of the fence, and you see all the manholes where the drainage is going. Hmm. Is it my house? Nope. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking over there. That, that bottom lane. <laughs> I think okay. that's, another, that's another thing that has gone by in this town a lot is every subdivision has a drainage system. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. And every drainage system becomes the DPW's problem as soon as the subdivision is accepted and that adds to their workload mm -hmm. and the town has never really said okay DPW we've added this now here's something here's some help yeah. to mm -hmm. do what we've been adding it just uh, I think that at one time they were talking about uh, a subdivision having to put a sum of money yeah. aside you know for future use mm -hmm. on the drainage systems but it hasn't been that. But they are. Deep, there's a lot of them that need attention. It's just, you know, you only can do just so much yeah. with what you got. You'll have to excuse me since I'm new. So when I followed this conversation, we started out by talking yes, about the you. big pit yep. that yeah. should go at the intersection of Furnace Lane and Mattachusa Street. But we discovered that there's not enough room to put the big pit in. There's not enough Plus, it's either. like yeah, the pit will be in the water. Yes. So the alternative is to put filters in storm drains. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that's important living at the edge of a pond because I can tell you when it rains out, just kind of a few more days, and there'll be an algae, big algae bloom after a rainstorm. Mm -hmm. So that's evidence that bad things are going into the pond. Yep. But the filters, what agency pays for the filters? The town actually, two years ago, we put money aside to have this drainage improvement done at town meeting. Okay. And the money is actually sitting there ready that, to be spent. And that's what they're used to put the, get the filters with. Okay. Yeah, those little. filters are a good idea then, because yeah. yeah, it's a, it's yeah. a, the money has already been appropriated for cleaning the water in that area. Only it was a, a different way that we can't do. So, yeah. we we did check with everybody in town hall, and they say we can use this money to do 
How much money? Us, What's allotted? Do you know? I believe the original allotment was two hundred fifty thousand, mm -hmm. and the first round was fifty thousand. I think yeah. the one we did at Samson, and that left two hundred um, between engineering and the cost of the storm scepters. There was nowhere close enough to do mm. the installation of it. Mm -hmm. But there should be there should be plenty of money to do on. Yeah. this project. And as really? I said earlier, if there's money left, they want to take and put these in some of the other mm -hmm. drains uh, yeah, that are down towards Lindy's and, yeah. all, yeah. Through yeah. and yeah. all through there because they don't yeah. have anything in them. Yeah. So somebody at some point has to sort of think long term, though. If you are going to have to, if DBW is going to have to maintain those mm -hmm. every year, and we're putting more and more in there. Well, yep. that's going to be a bit, it no. isn't like you can stop doing something else you're responsible for. Yeah, but on the you other know? hand, if we don't continue to upgrade and do what we're supposed to, then we'll start losing funds. Yeah, well, that's why so I think it's all important that I'm hoping yeah. that the budget really for DPW gets increased sure, to That's help why I want to throw it in is because I, w I want people to realize that they're going to have to spend money yeah. to keep the water clean. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. I mean, it's not just when you get done with it and it's, it's yep. there forever. Yeah. I mean, you can't give up something else you're doing. Yeah. No. We're gonna we're gonna plow less because we have to do this in the oh, spring. You can't. <laughs> and you can keep me plow. You don't have to plow me out. I like getting stuck in the snowstorm at I, home. I think not <laughs> digging the big dig hole is smart. Yeah. Mm. I didn't think that would. Right. Well, one of the other issues with that is too, yeah, we need to. Have Mike is already settle. here for example. Right. Okay. Yep. And they're gonna pave this year. Yeah. From Hanson to center of town. Yeah. The, the next one on the yeah. Bristol Estates, there's some plans in here. It's just it, it, if there was a spill, it would stop that also. It settles out in the bottom of the tank, and then if we spot it, then we call, uh, Hoadley has, he, he's the one we use if we have an issue in a catch basin. He <coughs> comes out and retrieves that stuff, which the catch basin... We, uh, we have a gentleman that runs that truck all year long, so when he spots stuff like that, he makes a note, and we call Holdley, and they come out and remove it. No, yeah, it's a big process. All right, so we're just going to move along because we do have, um, you know, a scheduled meeting that is here for 8.15, so we're just running a little bit behind here. So um, modification to Bristol Estates plan? Yeah, there it is. It's some minor... Uh, alterations to the plan, it's to the original plan, subdivision plan. Off we looked them over, so it doesn't really affect anything that we've done. So it has nothing to do with us? No. Nope. Okay. Other than we have to have the plans updated in our file. Okay. So nothing to do with conservation on that? No. Bristol list. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, funding for water lily treatment at Furnace. Did we sort of talk about we that? We, we just talked that. about that. So it looks like we are good on everything. Any other discussions anyone wants to bring up? I know no? Okay, perfect. And then I know we do have a meeting. You mu it must be Mike. Yes, this is Mike, yeah. Okay. Hi, how are you? Perfect. So we have Mike Madonna uh, is going to present an open space plan for us. You want to come take a seat? I'm in, Mike, but you have some new members here. I don't know how many of you. <laughs> Sharon McNamara. Hi, I'm Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Nice Pleasure to meet to you. you. Pleasure. You know Scott. He's I know Scott. Hi, how you doing again? Good to see you. Yourself. Mark, so yeah. Nice to meet you. Mark, nice to meet you as well. Sandra Simon. Sandra, I remember seeing you yeah. before. Good to see you. <laughs> okay. How's it going? Good. So this is a, <clears throat> to recap, basically. Mike, before we start, I just want to warn you that time. She was. Oh, I, know, I, know, I, I, know, I want to get my hands on that. Look at it. <laughs> Actually, why don't you introduce yourself as well, too, so we just everyone at home can follow along who you are and why yeah, you're okay. here. Uh, my name is Mike McDonald. I'm the acting or current uh, open space chairman, which is a informational uh, works on in concurrence, whatever, with the conservation committee. <clears throat> in this past spring, we worked with the uh, Conway School of Landscape and Design. Made a couple of their three three masses students uh, over their winter term. Basically, took our open space plan, went through it with a fine tooth comb, did a very good job on it. And a couple of them actually have uh, very strong backgrounds in water management, conservation. A couple, of, I think, one of them had like a landscape and business uh, that he ran too. So it was like a, a very talented group of individuals that went through the plan. And unfortunately, I only brought one copy. The other copies are with the. Uh, 
the other members of the open space committee, they're going through and basically vetting the information that was put into it. And for the most part, they took the original plan, which was originally, I think it was uh, 2007. It was, uh, you know, minor minor updates, a couple of things, but was still lacking a lot, of, a lot of pieces and parts. So basically we're uh, 10 years behind and and uh, I think we got a got a pretty good draft. There's still a couple pieces that need to be uh, added to it, um, but basically brought it so you guys can kind of get a look at. Breeze through it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was gonna give Rachel an electronic copy, and we can post that online mm -hmm. just as a, a draft document nice. or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Just as, as somebody that's never seen that before, what are some of the highlights that yeah. would be interesting? Basically, interest to us? Uh, basically the highlights for certain types of grants uh, for, for the town to have access to would be like a, at the federal and state level. Uh, one of the requirements to uh, get those drafts or get those grants or whatever is to be able to submit a grant to have a current and uh, approved open space plan by, I'm not sure if it's the Department of Environmental Protection or Department of State, there's some sort of, um, might be the Department of Recreation, I'm not really sure, yeah. but basically to get grants, uh, you know, that kind of goes in line with that conservation, recreation, if you want to have a grant for like a new playground or update the ball fields or something like that, there's money and funds available, but you have to have a current open space plan to be able to get access to those funds. Does this address certain fees? Yep, yep. Uh, the one, of the, mm -hmm. one of the first sections uh, gives you a rundown of like the, it's actually pretty, the group that, you know, Sandra did a great job uh, doing like the geology that makes up the town of Pembroke, how the ponds got here in the first place, goes like the glacial history, which is really kind of uh, in-depth and interesting. Uh, there's another mm -hmm. section that has like the demographics of the town, for example, kind of gives you analysis of the kind of building and the kind of uh, economic background that uh, the citizens are, are from. We did a couple uh, oh, public surveys for the Open Space Committee. We got about, uh, I think, 1% of the population. It's kind of a, a small showing, but it did give a good... Uh, I would say like a good sample across the board. It wasn't a, a large sample, but it did give you a good varied sample of what the people were interested in, because there's a lot of different, uh, a lot of different opinions of, you know, what the town's lacking, what they like about the town, and everything like that. So there's a, a lot of strong opinions. Mm -hmm. They usually <laughs> find, you know. Uh, <clears throat> and section five gives you an inventory of the open spaces that are heavy, the conservation restrictions, which means that. Either the town of Pembroke owns them. We have uh, we're fortunate to work with Wildlands Trust, and they have a couple properties here with mm -hmm. us. And they've and they've uh, gone through different developers and stuff like that. They work very well with with other groups, and uh, we have a couple nice nice properties that have like water frontage and everything like that that they help manage and they also help secure. And uh, so conservation restrictions, um, you know, any any land that's owned by the Town, town's conservation uh, committee. Any historical properties or points of cultural interest and stuff like that; those are all highlighted in there. And um, I think we list the town properties as well because and kind of delineate between the school, what's used for school prop. Because not all not all open space is strictly, you know, walking trails or ponds or whatever. That's something that people don't realize. It's also cemeteries. It's also, you know playgrounds and, and ball fields and that's because you know you know you're not gonna just because you put up a ball field the like, geese not gonna stop going there and stuff like that which right. is you know as as value for the um, ecologically I don't think ecological standpoint but you know from the nature nature side of things it still adds value but not making it to a parking lot. Mm -hmm. So it's so it's a lot of information but yeah, it's a yes. uh, more than a glance for sure. <coughs> Will those be available for people to get a copy of those? Yeah, actually, what they what they've done in the past is they they burned a bunch of copies, and each department would would have a copy. Uh, they would have copies available at the town library. Mm -hmm. and I think even I don't know if they perhaps at the post office. Was post there? office, I think yeah. maybe a couple of the school libraries too. They put them yeah. out to. Um, 
This is a draft? Yeah. And each um, department in the town um, gets a copy to review and and give their edits? Exactly. When we're pretty, <laughs> I think we're getting pretty close to that point. Uh, there's a couple of major sections that still need to be done. Uh, we need to figure out about a build-out analysis, uh, and, uh, ADA accessibility study, which is the uh, American Disability Act. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, to, for the town to have, you know, public space or whatever, we have to have. I'm not sure if it has to be a person with a qualification to do it, or if it's just a simple checkbox survey or whatever. Basically, take an inventory of the spaces that we have and how accessible they are to people with wheelchairs or with disabilities. And that's something I want to keep track of and make sure that we're not kind of pushing them out to the friend or something like that, eliminating their access to the amount of spaces that we have around town. Mm -hmm. And then um, section 5.3 is that what Sandra's looking at right now. Is, I, this, I find it really interesting. The premises. And uh, so a lot of that was just, that section was just last minute. The guys didn't realize that, you know, it was a big, a big chunk of data that they had to go through and they didn't think they could, you know, do, speak, you know, speak well to it in the short amount of time that they had because that was like one of the last things they looked at. What is that well, section? <coughs> the land inventory and it's, it's a combination of all the chapter lands. Does it have the tax takings in it? Tax not, taking parcels? Not sure if it has the tax, like the chapter um, 61 parcels. And then it'll have the, all the land use codes, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, yeah, and then it also, the so there's a quantity and section, and then there's also a qualifiable section about, you know, is is this a, does this have good water frontage? Does this abut maybe other other open space lands? Does it abut maybe another town? Because yeah. one of the things they came out with is that we have a lot of borders with the towns, with other towns with open space, but it kind of ends with us. And there's a lot of sections that are still um, not not protected, but also you know, sections that you would want to protect, like you know, along the North River and, and, th yeah, and things like that. Yeah, I was just going like to ask that. if you could give an example. Okay. Yeah. North River and I would say the Great Great Cedar Swamp, too, I think, are the two areas that they highlight in there. Mm -hmm. <coughs> <coughs> Greatest places in town. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's a couple uh, areas I was hoping to get, you know, input from you guys about with your background, because they have a s small paragraph about lawns, and I'd like to, you know, add in a thing about, like, fertilizer and runoff and maybe like what could you do as an alternative to avoid that or whatever. And then there's a small section about invasive species that they kind of talk about, but I think maybe we can highlight some of the uh, species that are problematic that we're seeing in our area. Because if you look online, you know, you get a list of a thousand different things, but if the town of Pembroke knows that there's a certain... I would guess that the Pembroke Watershed Association would be right up to date with their um, different volunteers. They mm -hmm. have like the weed watchers, I think they there, call yeah. themselves. So. Well, you know, we just went to a meeting last week and okay. there's only four people that are active in that whole thing. It's, it's falling apart, okay. they're trying to revive it. So okay. right now it's it's kind of a dormant, <coughs> uh, you know, association, but they're trying to revive it and get membership. So, uh, you know, it's uh, it's on life support right now, but they're trying to, trying to kick it back up. <coughs> it's kind of tough with the, uh, you know, the volunteer associations, it's like everybody yeah. has time and nobody has time. And yep. mm -hmm. I think the only way you're going to really get a handle on a lot of the invasives is start with the simple ones, the loose strike, they're pretty hand pullable. Just start around the ponds mm -hmm. and start upstream and go downstream. Mm -hmm. There's some places are loaded, some places aren't, but um, if you just leave them, that's all you're going to have. How do you spell it? Loose strife. Loose strife? Yeah, purple loose strife. That's all around sandy, you can just pull it up, but then you have bare sand, and oh, only they're allowed to do that, not us, right? You can't pull a weed and leave bare sand. They can just drain the water down and leave bare sand, so yeah. the plant grows there. In Lauren, I'm not certain how that would work. Do you want to remove a whole lot of them? You're going to have bare sand, mm -hmm. and that might be another. That's a lawbreaker. So. I didn't even think of that too, yeah. but that might. But be they a good can thing do it, but I'm not certain of remediating <coughs> weeds. You could do that. Excuse me. So you're looking to elaborate on the portion of the plan that addresses ponds mm -hmm. and part of it, the invasives. Mm. Yep. And there are only four members of the water system. But they're looking they for more help. And, and half of that, Sandra, go half ahead. of that forms a husband and wife <laughs> team. So I think I know yeah. the husband and wife you're yeah, talking um, about. And it's funny, I, I went on their website actually and uh, uh, you know they list the water bodies in Pembroke and most of Silver Lake is actually in Pembroke. They don't even list Silver Lake 
on yeah, the website yeah. is something that they're concerned about. So mm -hmm. uh, that was interesting to me. But uh, you know, again, I think it's a uh, it's a it's an agency that. Uh, or I'm not sure Hanson knows that Oldham is in their town. So yeah, yeah, yeah. They used the weed harvest a couple of years. No, oh, they did. Yep. <laughs> Hmm. Well, DEP didn't, right? When they sent that letter, that was different. Yeah, they didn't know that Hanson that the pond was in Hanson. Oh, well, <laughs> well <laughs> talking about the state. <laughs> <laughs> We're being recorded, and um, <laughs> um, it's interesting though. There was one thing that you were talking about on there. I was following the one I was going to make a comment about, but I mm -hmm. don't know what it was. I can't remember. Anyone have any questions for Mike? Yeah, so just curious, so what, what's your next step and what's the timetable to get this? Uh, well, basically, I was hoping to, uh, actually, I forgot about one section, too. I'll talk, talk about this section. I'll see the uh, section 9 is like a seven-year action plan, which is kind of interesting, too. <coughs> and this is a combination of the things that uh, we got from the, the town's uh, Public serve, the survey. public space surveys, mm -hmm. and put them in towns people, and then also highlights uh, sections that the open space committee uh, recommends. And it's also a couple, couple points that are inputted from the uh, from the guys that wrote the plan or whatever, things that they saw as best practices as far as a conservation style group or whatever, and what they think a town outside should be going after. <coughs> so as far as a, a timeline. Uh, well, part of the section is this, it needs a responsible party, a funding source, and then, uh, you know, a timeline or a mandate that they're, they're talking about a estimated uh, completion date, basically. And there's a couple couple things in here that would be pretty extensive, too, but basically looking we at... We were talking about that earlier, the Brockton, Abington, and Rockland using mm -hmm. the water. So, you yeah, watch the video over. <laughs> Because we did, we literally talked yeah. about that earlier. Can I talk about that for a minute now? Mm -hmm. Back um, when I was on the Open Space Committee, when we um, structured the purchase of Tubbs Meadow, the city of Brockton um, was open and contributed money to the purchase um, to protect their watershed around Silver Lake. So they are open to um, putting money into a project, filters maybe, or mm. or protecting the ponds that make their way into Silver Lake. Mm -hmm. the, um, yeah, they, they end up with most of the water from that whole watershed, that, that whole area. Yeah, yeah. And uh, sometimes you have to, I think, divide water up when some could go to Herringbrook, some could go, but in general, anything that fills Silver Lake is going to benefit the system. If, if at one point they can get under control, fill it up, get fish breeding in it, going to the sea, it's worth whatever we give as a, but if they don't, then it's kind of a failed structure. The, the I see water leaves, challenge. yes, the water leaves and it's not metered. There is no measurement of how much water leaves. Yep. Well, another issue is that Brockton has a terrible uh, pipe system in town and they have Real, no motivation to fix it because yeah. they the get water their water for free. free. Yeah. So, you know, these, there's a, just a slew yeah. of issues. Yeah, uh, there's too many issues to yeah. be mm -hmm. taken been, on by one committee on at our age. You have to start <laughs> young <laughs> to the gates and you have to go hard with the state. Right oh, really? Yeah. I thought that I had heard too that there were some like older houses in town that were actually hooked up to Brockton water and yeah. never. Yeah. 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 yeah, and exactly. they not even transfer it over to right. Pembroke. Why would you? I know. Well, right. <laughs> Why would you? Well, well, the only water main that runs a good section right. of 27 is brought. That's right. Mm -hmm. huh. Two of them. Two, two, what are they? 22 Two 24s. Inch? 24s, yeah. yeah. Well, they run actually through the bogs. Yep, right through. And in my house. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah, right uh, through the bogs. The mm -hmm. I actually saw a Brockton truck working yeah, there last week. Or yeah, they've been out. Uh, they've had a company out trying to redo their gates because they had an issue and they couldn't shut it down. I believe it was the issue when they blew the guy's yacht up in Bridgewater. They couldn't get everything shut down as quick as they needed to, so mm -hmm. they've been slowly working their mm -hmm. gates to mm -hmm. put new setups in. <coughs> okay. Anytime you see the steel plates on 27, it's not us, it's them. Okay. <laughs> so as far as a timeline, hoping to get this completed by the end of the year, 
and submit it to the state, and then that way we can start working forward with uh, our action items in 2008. So I, I heard you say something about uh, funding. So as a subcommittee of us, is that funding that uh, we assist with, or do they do that on their own for yeah. whatever needs funding? Well, it's funding is not just from here. It's any of the town funding usually needs an open space mm -hmm. program. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's just one of those requirements when anyone is looking for, you know, for funding. They say, well, you have an open space plan that's so, up to date. So that would go to town meeting yeah. well, funding. Past mm -hmm. practice, for example, if the open space committee, when I was on it, um, was interested in purchasing a piece of the land, the members would write the grant and then go in front of town meeting and ask them okay. for funding. So it's an article at town meeting? Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. And then do you, will you be more specific with us with the questions that you have? Because I know you said something about the chemicals when fertilizing the lawn. I remember that coming up a lot that you yeah. were doing, right, for special conditions with we people? Have, yeah, we have a special condition on all of our orders of conditions that yeah, call for well, we use no fertilizer, no, mm -hmm. depending where the where the I, project is. Mm -hmm. I almost think where we're such a sensitive town and an aquifer that it wouldn't be unreasonable in the future to have only licensed applicators apply with a given time, why, and reason. And that you take the tonnage out of, we've already cut the cranberry bogs down, they were huge. Now most of the contamination comes on the individual, as far as I'm concerned, and his own play in his yard. Um, and I mm -hmm. think that's what you're going to have to watch out for. Like, you go down the pond, you see all these, these beautiful, you know, there's a 50-foot buffer of lily pads, and all of a sudden there's two houses and there's none. Mm -hmm. That didn't just happen. That's chemicals. And you can read these things all over, but again, it's... I think where the bogs have been um, in their, their downturn and they're not p polluting that much and I think what's going to happen is the town has to look at its own selves as applicators and be in tune with where we live. Mm -hmm. Pet well, safe to bay safe. I'm just, if mm -hmm. I'm following you, you're saying all chemicals have to be a licensed applicator. I think you find it very hard to say a homeowner can't mm -hmm. take care of yeah. his yard no matter what. Just the expense what. of having yeah. somebody I mean, that, do it. Uh, and, so, and any commercial landscaper should know that they have to have a license applicated to put almost anything out that way. I mean, well, maybe then we should educate the public better rather than try uh, to take things away. I think away. That, that, that would be a good class that's, that's or a where, workshop you know, to That's where I was thinking where um, maybe it's a and, more of a public and, service thing yeah. where mm -hmm. and, yeah. and just encourage, you and, know, organic yeah. fertilizers. Well, exactly. I think that that's uh, a big well, thing. Well, right the, the pond people yeah. used to do similar things like that. That was always one of their big things was mm -hmm. educating them yeah. of that buffer that they wanted to keep around the ponds. And, and all of that. I think yep. pe being environmental fr environmentally friendly, whether you're in a cul-de-sac, a side street, a busier street, I think that that's something that's sort of, you know, the climate mm -hmm. of where we are in 2017. I think a lot of people would be interested in that. So mm -hmm. maybe that's something that a, a couple of the committees could get together and just have a workshop yeah. one day at the library. Yeah, you have to remember that we live in very condensed areas around the ponds. All of our effluent goes underground and then all of the runoff from the cars and all of the fertilizers Mm -hmm. Just dump in, mm -hmm. and there's no remediation. It's just flush the toilet, everything goes in, and chaos ensues. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the best examples is you know? uh, Westmont Ponset Pond. That's right. And then, you know, it's so nutrient rich. I mean, they've done so, all kinds of sampling there, and that's, you know, besides the water is stagnant because they dam it up for <laughs> flowing to east, but um, part of that is all the all the surrounding, you know, homes, homes you know, in the nutrient runoff off from the lawn. Yep. So, you mm -hmm. know, that's a perfect example of how bad it can get. Yeah, well, they're not supposed to be doing that anyways. I mean, those are, mm -hmm. they all have what is a condition that they're not supposed to be using chemicals, right? Unless yep. they're organic. I mean, I know, yep. I mean, I'm near cranberry. Any, any, bottom, any order that we write uh, has a condition yeah. in it about chemicals. That's, yeah. that's what we right. call standard yeah. boilerplate mm -hmm. that goes on there. But, I think but, but unless somebody comes in front of the board, the there's, right? no, yeah. Right, yeah. there's, yeah. there's nothing there. Yeah. 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 Until, yeah. until somebody comes yeah. before yeah. the board, yeah. it's yeah. tough yeah. to So that's such a small it. percentage yeah. of the property. Yeah. 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 And you have so many of these companies right now. Not as much as they will with the Go Green, this one. 
they're all got salesmen I mean, pounding the paint yeah. yeah. selling this stuff. They have a lot everybody of wants a green lawn. Yeah. yeah. Well, I do the berries, uh, and, berries, they're gone. Uh, mosquitoes mm -hmm. just because we're the on the cranberry bugs yeah. and that water sometimes gets high and stagnant, especially too. across the street from us, that little, you know what I mean, oh, when you go down the hill <coughs> on the oh, right-hand yeah. side, that's yep. awful sometimes. So we get that, we get it done, but it's all like, um, I don't know, flower-based or something. Mm. What is it? All organic. All organic. It's yeah. just, uh, but, you know, it's just sort of the smell that keeps the mosquitoes and insects. Yeah. Well, I think that's the education part of this where, yeah. you know, as you said, people are amenable to that type of stuff yeah, in this environment. So, you know, maybe some uh, education would... Uh, I think that would be great for us to do maybe the in the spring. go organic and, yeah. and, and you know... Right, it, so it stack such working help. on that, Rick. Well, <laughs> Rick's <I think>, not <laughs> a committee. <laughs> no, I started a few. I think um, we have a grant possibly that we'll get a reforestation nursery going um, in this town. That would be nice. And then mm -hmm. hopefully another one for a conservation kind of land is beautiful for farming. Love to see a community farm going. Mm -hmm. Both where you have two or three types. You know, people have their own plots, people pay to go in and have one. Like the Fenway? Basically. Like the Fens? Yeah. yeah. That's how they the, do in Boston, right? That idea. There's all different aspects, mm -hmm. but yeah. again, um, composting mm -hmm. and teaching people through gardening that you don't need the chemicals and that things are mm -hmm. better from the sea back to the sea. Mm -hmm. It's a cycle. Take yeah. from the sea, put it in your garden, it goes back to the sea and feeds you. Yeah. Well, I think that that sounds like something yeah. good that maybe we can put together for the spring, like early spring, February, getting people ready and prepared on what to do. So maybe we can work with something with you in mm -hmm. your department, your uh, committee. I'm sure that there'll be a couple of us that would like to do that. Because um, well, I think little workshops will be good. Pamphlets made out and have them handed out at a town meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great idea. You know, because people may not know who are on the pond. Like, you, you know, you have to think about, too, around the ponds. A lot of times it was, you know, I know my family had one. They lived in the city, and they had the cottage. I'm sure nobody ever told them you can't put chemicals on your lawn. So maybe it's just a matter of educating people that don't know that maybe they're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. So well, Those things that look like, um, what is it, mothballs, but they throw them in the water and kill the lilies. Um, well, my father wanted to put mothballs in my garden this year to keep away something or other, and I was like, I won't be doing that, Dad. No. <laughs> so there you go, okay? I think um, the community garden, the reforestation nursery, mm -hmm. um, teach people how to do things organically, show them the process. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, perfect. It's, it's everything you do in this town goes right back out to the bay. Yeah. We're one big, mm -hmm. one big river. So, Mike, did you have anything else that you wanted to discuss with us? Uh, I think I think that's it for now. There's definitely some things we'll have to, you know, yep. if build, you need build on later there. on. But yeah, because if you need those uh, specific questions for us, if you mm -hmm. want to just put something together, get it to Rachel, yeah. and she can make sure to forward it to us, and Bob can answer them all. Yeah. <laughs> 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 He's usually my go-to yeah. guy. Yeah. Anyway, so. I'm too glad I'm here. <laughs> so Didn't fun. you like the days when I used to just be the secretary and give you candy? <laughs> so. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mike. Thank it was very, very nice to meet you. Thanks for coming. This is very interesting. Nice really nice. Nice work. Um, does anybody else have any questions, comments, or anything for Mike? No? Any other questions, comments in general? Discussions? No? Okay. Next meeting will be... Rachel? Um, it's up to you guys if you want to go back to every single week or if you want to stay every other week. Every other week, so we have things what to talk we, about? What do we have next week? We don't have anything scheduled. I think Monday's a holiday. Next week is a holiday. Oh, Monday's a holiday. Anyhow. Monday's a holiday, so we'll, we'll skip. skip next week. Okay. So it'll be the following week. Yep. Yep. If anybody has anything that they want to discuss, just feel free to get that to Rachel. Um, she'll make sure to put it on the agenda so we have it. And anybody have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Good job, guys.